Hey, Master All Things Dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips in dentistry. You know, uh, a student of mine at allthingsendo.ca on our Facebook group asked a question, where or how do you, you know, what's some tips and ch tips and tricks on how to treat patients that, you know, do endo on patients that can't open very wide? Well, one option is to refer, but I know you're not here for that. You're here to learn a couple tips. So I'm gonna show you, I was gonna demo it on my good old metal. I found this in the basement, just, I was gonna do another demo, but the demo actually, I think it solves a lot of, answers a lot of questions. So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. So look at this bad boy. There's like metal teeth and like little screws. I have no, if you have ever used this, if you know what this thing is for, I have no idea actually, maybe it's just for positioning. It's old, like they don't make metal deniforms anymore. So I was gonna do with that, but I just was like, you know what, the, the original seems to be, it functions really well. And if you have any comments, any any helpful tips, because the community loves, you know, it's just such an amazing community. If you have any tips and pointers about how you tackle like upper sevens when the patient can only, only open that much, uh, how to tackle those cases. Anyways, let's jump into it. So the question is trying to open up, trying to do an endo on somebody who cannot, you know, if this is normal opening, they can only open this much. I'm doing this at home. I just want to go over some of the tips. I have the basic stuff. So the first one I'm going to do is I'll use a bite block every time, every case gets a bite block unless they don't want it. The next one is standard for, say we're gonna be tackling a number, an upper second molar. What I'm gonna have is a six, eight, 10, and a 15 potentially of the short 21 millimeter files. Now, if you're starting to do more endo, my experience in general practice, like in different clinics, they don't normally have a wide range of different lengths. I'll tell you that four millimeters between, this is a, t I don't have a 10 at home, this is a 20. So this is a 20, number 20 file, and it, so this is a 25 millimeter. This is a number eight and a 21 millimeter. Now that four millimeters difference makes a significant difference when you're trying to get that file into that tooth. So I'll use shorter, and I actually routinely will use short, uh, short files to initially try to engage MB2, not even just in sevens, but in sixes as well. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'll actually use cotton forceps to place my files, especially on sevens, it's really hard to get to see what you're doing. So say for example, I've got my mirror and you know you're trying to see what's going on and it's really hard to see what's going on with your mirror. There's not a lot of room. So what I'll do is I'll use cotton forceps and that'll be that'll be placement. Now the next stage is I'm actually gonna put a, a not a little, not a J, like a little J hook, I'll put a banana curve, something that's easily straightened when it goes in the canal. And the reason why I do this is because as I approach so if the, you know, if the, if the, if the tooth is right here, oops, and I'll have, <laughs> so I'll have the curve of the file. It doesn't really matter. You can, you, you can adjust the unidirectional stuff. It doesn't really matter. What the curve is doing is it's going along. So say here's, you know, here's the axis of the tooth on oh, here. Here's the axis of the tooth or the canal you're trying to get into. You're trying to weasel it and try to sneak it in, into that little spot with that curve and the file's not standing straight up. Like normally, what you would have to do in that situation, the file would have to be, you can see me fumbling, the file would have to be standing straight up and down and to get it in there. But when you've got that banana curve, and the banana curve is very gentle, because when you, you know, if this is your, you know, MB1 of your seven, actually, se you know, seven molar, your patient, can, you know, the patient can only open, well, I guess it's upside down like that, but patient can only open like that much. What you're trying to do is sneak that in laterally with that banana curve and your forceps so you're not getting your fingers in there so it's going to kind of look something like this it's going to sneak it in down it goes and you'll kind of place it in there and it'll kind of it'll hold its it'll hold its place and i don't have much of a bend because then i'm going to start watch winding and the watch winding will you know if you need to bend it you need to bend it at the apical portion but first trying to get that file in there is the freaking problem so i get it so the next thing is with irrigating syringes. So I'm always gonna bend it at 18. I don't know why, that's just been a normal length. But sometimes you're right, they're hard to get in. So what I'm gonna do is I'll bend it accordingly. And then actually sometimes what has to happen is I, I maybe not so much a bend there, but a bend here, like that. Again, with the idea is to, oh gosh, what am I doing here, Ash, come on. Okay, so kind of bending it, as long as there's an indicator, it doesn't really matter. So I'm trying to, the bend is there, so I know that that's 18 millimeters. So I'm just trying to sneak it into that orifice, whatever, and then try to get it in there. And then I can't even get it in here. Okay, so then it goes in and then you're good. 
So just little bends along, you know, oftentimes if I need to get around a curve, I will actually bend it. I should make it short about that. If there's a curve, you know, a mesial curve and I want to get down, I actually will bend after I've cleaned and shaped everything, I will bend it. So it actually will, you know, travel, traverse along that curve. That's not frequent that I do it, but I'll do it here and there. So that's the last thing. So the next thing is, so we've done 21 millimeter files. That'll be pretty standard, especially on sevens to start anyways, to get them in because once you know, once you've opened the orifice and cleaned it out, you know, open the orifice, open the curl two thirds, it's easier to get bigger, longer files down to get the, get the length. So 21 millimeters to at least get in there. And then 21 millimeter uh, rotary files, again, or reciprocating files, whatever you're using, you know, that four millimeter makes a difference. And on these, I will, so this is not, this is a really old hand piece I found in the basement. So, what I will do is I will bend the heck out of this, all right? So if I need to, so watch, I'm gonna bend it once, it's hard to see there. So I'll bend it like this. So I'll get it kind of flexed, that does that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take it with my finger and my thumb comes around and I'll actually see how my thumb just went like that and that hopefully will give it more of a curve. And my experience has been that you're pretty much safe, especially if this is a brand new file. So there you go. That's if you've ever watched the uh, raccoons, it's a Canadian cartoon show when I was a kid, like 300 years ago, that's Cyril Sneer's nose. <laughs> so that's another way. And I actually will use that. This is a routine thing to get into MB2 to MB1. And, you know, imagine again, you know, the opposing, the rubber dam is only like that high. So you're able to sneak it in. This might be a little bit too much. I was getting a little excited. You know, be able to sneak it in and then somehow bring your mirror in and then look to see to get it in that place. Having straight line access makes a huge difference too, especially almost not too wide of an access, but it allows you to slide this down. So say, for example, this is this is the wall, the mesial, mesial buckle wall, and here's your orifice down here. You know, I often will slide that down to get into the orifice. That's why I was trained as well. Um, because then it eliminates this, trying to like, and you know what I'm talking about, like fumbling around trying to find where the orifice is. Um, so that, you know, compared to the 25, a 25, you know, if you need to, if the tooth is 25, you know, 30, 30 an upper seven would be say 22 millimeters long. Um, what I have done before is, let's just, what I'll do is I'll take, I don't, I don't have anything to measure, but I will measure from the hub and I will sync it to the hub. There have been times uh, in different clinics we didn't actually have the right length of file. We didn't have 21.5 millimeters, okay? So I was like, are you kidding me? And they ran out. So, you know, I got to sync it to the hub and beyond and try to make it work. And sometimes I was, you know, sometimes I was hand filing with this th thing because from here to here is 21 millimeters. This little bevel is 22 millimeters. So, and up to here, I can't remember what it is. You know, I didn't have to sync it that far, uh, but it just depends. Depends on like this hand piece is not it, but my the one I the one I was using allowed me to expose that amount that I was able to use. So I didn't have to switch to a 25. I was able to finish my case with just this. Anyways, I hope that helps. Let me know. There's a couple little tips that I use actually every day with these difficult patients. So thank you so much for being here. I'm super grateful you're part of our community. And if you haven't checked out Dr. Ali Nase's first part one of his video, it's Absolutely phenomenal. And part two is coming up too after this video. We posted a few weeks. I'm, again, I'm super grateful for him, super grateful for you. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and send this to your friends. Anyways, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.